All right. So now flip back over to page 189 and let's talk about the creation of a valid contract. A valid contract has several parts to it. Let me see if I let's go over here and do what we're supposed to be doing now. There is an offer, and the offer is made by who? The buyer. Better known as the buyer, but it's made by the offer or. Remember the OR and the EE? But Cameron, you are exactly correct. Most commonly, we would call this person the buyer. He makes the offer to who? The uh -oh. offer which we most often would call who? The seller. That offer is a set of conditions in which he is willing to convey his money for the conveyance of the real estate back to him. That is the offer. Now, that offer, there's three things that can happen to it. One, is that offer can be accepted. Two, that offer can be flat out rejected. And what is the third option? It can be countered. All right. So the offer, a counter is nothing more than a modification of the original offer. But watch this. Now it goes here, counter number one. But this person now becomes their offeror, and this person becomes the offeree, all right? So the seller would counter back to the buyer, Here's my counter offer. Now, here's an important concept you got to keep in mind when dealing with offer uh, offers and counters. A counter offer is a legal rejection of the original offer. It is a legal rejection of the original offer. So once you counter back, you cannot change your mind. All right. So let's say Ross sends me an offer. My client counters back to Ross. And then my client calls me up and goes, hey, you know, my, my boss, read it into that, his wife. My boss has changed my mind. We're going to go ahead and take his offer. You cannot do that. Once I countered back, I have legally rejected his original offer. So what you see, there are times when sellers are afraid to counter because that gives the buyer a chance to literally walk away. Right? Because Ross offers me $101,000 and we counter back $101,005, literally Ross can go, no, we're out. Because once you counter back to me, once I counter back to Ross, I've legally rejected his original offer. Now he can just say, we're done, we walked away. All right. So a counter offer is a legal rejection of the original offer. And I think I told you the story of the uh, army, the guy in the army, he left and his wife stayed here to sell the house. Did I tell you that? Okay. 
I had a deal several years ago where I pulled the comps and we listed the house like at 145, 147. And the husband was in the military and he got his orders to leave. So he left and his wife stayed behind with the children to finish school and sell the house. Well, about two months went by and the wife came to me and said, look, we're taking the next offer. I don't care what it is. I miss my husband. My kids miss their father. We've got to get them into the new school when school starts. So we got an offer at like 139, way below what I thought the value was. Here's the key to this story. She didn't even counter anything because she was afraid if she countered even one item that would give that buyer a chance to walk away. So they offered like 139 and everything else was cool. I mean, there wasn't a whole bunch of stupid stuff. And she said, take it, we're taking it. I'm like, yeah, but I think we can get more money. She's like, I don't care. I'm willing to walk away, but I don't want the buyer to be able to walk away. I'm accepting that offer and we're closing in 30 days and I'm leaving. So a counter would have allowed that buyer to go, I'm out and walk away. So you have to have that offer and that, and that counter would then uh, allow as a, le a legal rejection. So if an offer comes over and you decide to accept it, there has to be an acceptance. Now, here's one of my favorite stories in the whole book. Any golfers, thumbs up if you're a golfer. What's the most you guys have ever paid for a round of golf? I paid $49,000 one day. I paid 28 bucks. 28 bucks? I paid $49,000 one day for golf. All right. Why now, don't you do let, let me preface this story by saying today's world with the technology we have in today's world, this won't happen. So remember, you got to got to put your mindset in the stone age, you know, like seven years ago, as far as technology goes. So I had a house listed and thank God it was listed by a, a to a friend, I mean, the seller was a friend of mine. His name's Manny Abates, all right? B owns a bunch of bars here in Indy. $700,000 house, I had it listed at 7%. I'm going to the golf course. I get a phone call from an agent that says, Raymond, we have just sent you a full price offer wanted you to know and I'm like sweet so I said okay let me get back to the office and I will get it off the fax machine you guys know what those are right okay just checking so I called Manny and I'm like hey dude we got an offer full price he's like sweet you're the best agent ever I said I know that I said, I'm going to go golfing. I'll call you when I get back to the office. And he said, okay, thanks, and hung up. So now my question to you, my favorite quote in the whole wide world is by a chief, uh, a Supreme Court judge by the name of Potter Stewart. Potter Stewart, look this up, well-known quote. They were, the Supreme Court was assigned a case on pornography. And this was in the 50s. And they were claiming that this film was pornographic in nature. And it was a case about expression versus, you know, well-being, I guess. And it went all the way to the Supreme Court. And Potter Stewart wrote the winning decision and when he in his dissertation 
he made this famous statement. I cannot define pornography, but I know it when I see it. And this movie is not pornographic. So my question to you is, you think you know what accepting an offer means? Tell me what you think accepting an offer is. You think you know it when you see it, but you cannot define it? What does accepting an offer mean? Cameron? I was gonna say like both parties like consent to the contract and then they make an agreement and sign. Both parties consent to the contract. Dude, I was right with you about halfway through, I lost you. Hey. I mean, I heard you. I just lost your, I just lost my interest. So yeah. you're, you're, you, you were getting close. <laughs> Anybody else? What does acceptance mean? Acceptance. Mandy told me we're going to accept it, right? Shauna? You didn't have a written, you didn't have a written offer. We have a written offer. Okay. And you're so on the fax machine. And it's so on the fax. to the office. Let me give you this part. Maybe this will help. Got back to the office and on my fax machine was the offer. Signed about an hour later, on top of it was the recension of the offer. They pulled it back from us. They rescinded it. How can they do that? Because we accepted, but my question to you is, what does accepted mean? Did you sign it? You yeah. actually got the contract in front of you. Say what, Cameron? So basically, your your fax machine actually accepted it, and, and then return, you accepted it. Is that what you're trying to get to? But you haven't signed it yet, have you? We had not signed it. Yeah, but he still has it, though. No, but, but you got to sign it. Sign no, it not, Cameron, you've got a good point, but don't confuse the acceptance of delivery with the acceptance of an offer. Yes, we accepted delivery because we are the representative for our client. So the second I receive it, my client is deemed to receive it. But we haven't accepted the offer. We've accepted the delivery of the offer but we don't have a contract formed yet because here's the kicker. Sarah, were you going to say something? I don't know. I would just think that once you, once your client said he wanted to accept that that would mean that it was accepted. You would think that, and that's why it cost me $49,000. The key is both parties must know. Both parties must know it's accepted. What we failed to do was tell the other side that we accepted the property or the offer. We, on our side of the table, Manny and I verbally agreed to accept the property, but we never communicated it back to the other side. So acceptance means both parties have to know. If I sent you an offer, Jamon, if I sent you an offer and I never heard from you, how do I know that you want it or accept it? I have to actually hear back from you saying we've accepted your offer. That is what true acceptance means. Now, I know where we're going, but Shauna, go ahead and ask the question. <laughs> Wait a minute, you said that the uh, buyer rescinded their uh, offer. There was an hour in between that we could have responded. Up until- oh, so Is that the given length of time then? Do what? Is that the given length of time then, an hour? Well, that was not our given time frame. We had five hours on the, offer but you can rescind an offer anytime up until it gets accepted 
So this is kind of like a vicious cycle here. So the question. So if you had not played golf and gone straight back to the office and accepted it, then you would be good. Technically, what I should have done was stop the car, turn around, went back to the office, got the fax machine, got the paper, went and found Manny, had him sign the offer, went back to the office and faxed it back to the other side. You are entirely correct, Christina. We did not tell the other side because my assumption was he told me we had five hours when he called me. I figured we had, we had enough time and our side agreed that we were going to, but, but prior to you accept, they can rescind an offer at any time. Hey, I'll give you 10 grand. I'll take that back. All right. So why did it cost you any money? Do what? Why did it cost you money? Well, what's 7% of, what's 7% of $700,000? Oh, well, you, were you not able to sell the property after that? Don't kill my story. Sorry. <laughs> the answer is yes. But I still paid 49 grand that day to let go, go golfing. All right. Yes, we ended up selling the house for full price anyway because it was a really nice house. But the key I'm trying to get here is you have to tell the other side. So let me ask you a question. Could I have picked up the phone and said, hey, we're going to accept your offer to the other agent? You could have, the other side would have accepted an oral contract or oral confirmation, right? What was the word? You just killed yourself on that one word. It's because I said oral. Real estate oh. works under the statute of frauds. That's right, you can't do it. So it has to be written down no matter what. It's to be in writing. All right. Now, I could have called the other agent and said, hey, we're going to take your offer, at least as a heads up. But he legally still could have pulled it back because real estate works under the statute of frauds, which says he has to have it in writing, i.e., he had to have Manny's signature with the box check that says acceptance, and then we had to know. So we would have had to have sent it back. Which, Christina, to your point, the next offer we got was Friday night. I went and found Manny. Friday night, I went and found him. I'm like, where are you at? He's like, I'm at work. I'm like, I'll be right there. I told you you own bar. So when I tell you he was in a bar, don't think he was drunk and end up like that last story. He actually was working. So I drove to the bar. He signed it on the bar. I drove back to the office Friday night at 5.30 and faxed it back. Did all of that in about a 30 minute span because I learned my lesson with the other deal. So the acceptance portion of this is both parties have to know it's been accepted. We just cannot sign it and leave it set on our desk. All right, now Cameron, to your point, just so that we're clear, if once I sign or once Manny signs it and I send it to you as the agent, you have now accepted delivery for your client. Even though you may not be able to talk to your client for two more hours because they're at work, it's still considered accepted because you are the agent of the client. Even though the client may not see it for three more hours because, hey, I'm at work, I can't get off early. You as the agent received it, so that counts as acceptance of delivery to the client, all right? So I got a question. In this like like little pandemic thing, say one party can't be there because they're sick or for some reason. Is there like a way you can extend contracts? Yes. Matter of fact, there has been the Indiana Association of Realtors and the National Association have actually created a new law or a new administrative law just in the last week that specifically deals with this, that says due to this COVID-19 issue that we're having, 
if a client cannot attend the closing because of sickness or because of social distancing or quarantining, that the contract can automatically be extended a certain number of days to account for this national pandemic. Okay. And there is now a verbiage clause, it's about this big, that we now put in purchase agreements just in the last three or four days. All right, it was put out to us and said, hey, you guys should use this. So yes, there is some consideration now for what's going on in the country as we speak. All right. I'm sure. <coughs> now, I preface that whole story with, <coughs> that wouldn't happen in today's world because now we have the technology of the offer would have came to my email, not a fax machine, on my phone, at which time I could have then forwarded that email to Manny, who can now electronically sign on the screen, send it back to me, I then send it back to the other agent, all while I'm driving. Don't text and drive. I would have pulled over. But all of that could now happen in a matter of 10 minutes. All right. This was a scenario of fax machine came to my office. I was physically located at the golf course. I had to go back and get the fax machine. I had to then drive to get Manny's signature had to drive back to the office to fax it back to the client. So I meant that process seven years ago was a couple hour process, depending on where your client or if your client even had a fax machine. In today's world, it now happens, bang, 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 bang. Give me the offer, forward the email, you sign it, send it back and I'll go back to it. Literally in a matter of minutes. So right. question, with the whole e-signature thing, how could you tell if someone was like, uh, I guess like mentally saying over an email during a contract or like, or like if they're like intoxicated or anything like that, like how you know they're gonna be in their right mind to be making a house agreement or a house purchase over email? In the situation of being inebriated, you are exactly correct, you could not. But in theory, how do I know that's not true, even in the old scenario where Manny would have signed it and I would have sent it back to you via fax? So the inebriation is, is one that would be a on-the-spot kind of judgment like the title company. Mm -hmm. The one about the age is obviously discernible because somebody would know, hey, she signed it on this date. We know her birthday. She's not. She wasn't seven. 118 when she signed that so most of the stuff is pretty easily determined inebriation would be the one exception where he, hey i don't know if he was drunk when he signed it so i you you're going to have to go with the assumption of that the agent is professional and if the agent saw their client was drunk hammered in a bar that they wouldn't ask their client to sign at that particular moment. 